Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome to Fallout 3, you only live once. Oh yeah, oh this is back again, this is back again, and it's going to be terrifying. Now for those of you who are new, you only live once is basically my attempt to do a full run through Fallout 3, including all DLC on a single health bar without ever healing, without ever healing uh, HP through any mechanism, without ever regenerating any health, without ever uh, regenerating any rads, anything like that. Everything, all damage I take stays permanent and persistent and I will enforce that in various ways if I have to. I've already done it in Fallout New Vegas, was able to do the entire game and all four DLCs and interestingly I got the good, more difficult ending to, uh, I kind of got the good, more complex ending to all four of those DLCs when I thought about it, which took me a long time, uh, but uh, yes, it was at least finally done, and now we're going to try and do it again in Fallout 3. So, let's crack on, and I will explain the rules as we go. And as the darkness becomes light, I get born. I... I still find this a slightly surreal uh, introduction. By the way, um, I never knew this. I, I didn't realize this until someone pointed this out to me fairly recently. That um, you control whether the baby cries or not. Pressing A makes the baby cry. You can be completely silent. Um, but if you press A, you actually cry. Um, I just completely miss that all the time. Okay, so, um, character build, which is going to kind of be um, a significant part of this episode, because obviously you build your character relatively slowly uh, over the course of, like, the introduction in Vault 101 uh, next to how you do it uh, in Fallout New Vegas, where it's much quicker. So, I'm going to go for a female character, and that's not just tradition, because I, you know, flipping always do that. Um, that's also because in this game, um, the perks like a confirmed bachelor, etc., um, didn't exist. So, um, if you want to take the perk where you do 10% bonus damage to um, a gender, you have to take the opposite gender to the gender you want to be doing bonus damage to. Um, men outnumber women in this game. Um, it's about even in the in the, like the raiders, but um, the enclave is very heavily male. So I'd rather take a girl so I can uh, take Black Widow in order to get a uh, bonus damage versus the enclave if I flipping manage to get that far in the game. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... And we have got a name to input. And just so you know, in my head, um, PD Shoot successfully retired, lived out a very long life. She travelled with Veronica. She actually um, introduced Boone to a female friend of hers, and they got married and Boone was never grumpy again. She went on a whiskey tasting tour with Cass. And of course went on a lovely adventure across the country to finally get Edie home so that Edie got where she was always trying to get in the first place. And after all of that was done, PD Shoot passed peacefully in her sleep, surrounded by her friends, together with Rex with a lovely fresh new brain sitting at her feet as she passed. And that would have been the end of PD Shoot. Had, of course, she not been reborn. Reborn today. Reincarnation being a thing that exists because of radiation. So she was reborn again. And when she was asked her name, she could only reply one thing. Oh, not again. Unfortunately, it was mildly misunderstood when the certificate was filed for her birth and it was simply filed as O-N again. Meaning, unfortunately, as far as everyone else was concerned, you only live once is on again. Beautiful. Now, let's see what I like as a character here. I'm not going to perfectly try and recreate PD Shoot. I'm, I'm happy to kind of just have a look through some of my favourite presets. I think I will go with a preset 7 with Blast Back and a little bit of extra red in the O'Burn hair. I think that works. Yeah, I think that works very nicely indeed. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? A bit of a hypochondriac, to be honest. Catherine? James! Catherine! She's in cardiac arrest. Now, unfortunately, Catherine just spotted that her baby was able to speak and identify her own name, and that that's mildly surprising. So she's gone into cardiac arrest and will sadly at this point die. One thing I always liked about that scene is obviously, um, you obviously there's a bit there's supposed to be a bit of a plot twist later in the game that you weren't born um in the vault. You were born at Project Purity and taken to the vault uh when you were very, very young. But, um, of course, you can actually tell that, uh, because if you look around the vault, you can't find, if you, like, look up in the vault, you can't find anything that looks like what you just saw. Um, you just can't find that. Um, so, uh, whereas you will find that exact room in Project Purity later. So, I don't know, I've always quite liked it as a little, uh, I've always quite liked it as a little touch that you can kind of figure out very early that you weren't born in the vault, because 
there's no room in the vault that looks right for you to have been born into. Whereas you can also see Dr. Lee, of course, carrying you away when Catherine's dying, whereas there's no Dr. Lee in Vault 101. So, obviously, you know, what happened to her? Because if she was, you know, if no one ever enters or leaves the vault, where would she be? So, anyway, it's quite good. Also, terrible baby pen. Baby pen that can be opened by any baby. Right, uh, and obviously we can jump around. But more importantly, we've got to have a Luxy at the... I've already exited the playpen game. There we are. Keep up. Bloody keep up. And look at your special book. I will indeed. Now... I've very carefully planned out this build, and it's going to be a little bit of a controversial one. It's not actually that unusual, but the one thing that people are going to mind is strength is one. Um, I'm going to have to deal with very, very limited carry capacity in this game, and that's absolutely necessary because there are some perks that are just absolutely essential, and to get them, I need lots of other stats I wouldn't normally want to be so high, like perception or agility, to be pretty high. So I need strength to be as low as possible to fund everything else. Uh, perception I need at five, that's fine. Bearing in mind, of course, I'll be able to boost all of these slightly later, either through um, intensive training or through bobbleheads. So perception five is fine. Endurance needs to go up to nine. Obviously, um, your HP is a function of how much endurance you've got in this game. And this is a calculation that's different in Fallout 3 from how it was in Fallout New Vegas. Your base HP in this game is 90. I think it was 95 in New Vegas. And then it's endurance times 20. So obviously I need my endurance to be as high as possible. It, just in order to literally have as much HP as possible. Now charisma is normally my dump stat. But it's normally my dump stat in New Vegas. Because I can just get around by having it at 1 and then using high intelligence to have many skill points to just make my uh, speech skill goes up. Because Charisma in Fallout 3 works as a multiplier where even with 100 speech um, you can fail a lot of speech checks in Fallout 3 with low Charisma. I need Charisma to be at a moderate level because there's a couple of speech checks I just need. And there's a perk or two that requires Charisma so I have to have Charisma at 5. This is part of the reason why Strength has to be so low because unlike normal I can't use Charisma as my dump stat. Strength has to be my dump stat. Intelligence obviously has to go up to 9 as usual because... Um, the way that you're going to win this game is basically by getting a couple of weapon skills and other important skills up to 100 as fast as possible while being as low level as possible. So the enemies are still relatively weak and you're relatively strong for the level that you are at. So I'm going to need intelligence at 9, obviously that's just a given. Agility needs to go up 1 to 6, that's entirely just to fund a couple of uh, perks again. There's a couple of perks I'm going to need agility for. It's not that useful just because it's one of those stats that works in Fallout 3 like Charisma worked in New Vegas where if you know I don't have high agility well I can compensate for almost all of that just by utilizing uh, skill points. The one thing I can't compensate for is number of action points but I'm not going to be using that that much because I'm going to have to be manually sniping in order just to pick off enemies from miles away so I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference that not, that's not that high. And then luck just sits at five. Again, um, ideally I'd like it a little bit higher, but I just can't. Uh, I can't justify it. So that's my character build. A lot less strength than I'd usually have. But one thing I should um, point out, um, strength requirements for guns was only a thing in Fallout New Vegas. It did not exist in Fallout 3. A strength one character can use a minigun without penalty in Fallout 3. So strength is a lot less essential than it is in New Vegas. So there we go. Read my book. Lovely. Get my teddy bear out of a toy chest. Obviously. Hello, Mr. Teddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you want to show me a Bible verse. I'm not desperately fussy, Liam Neeson. Of course, once you're up here, he doesn't actually bother turning to face you. He just kind of speaks as if you're kind of paying attention to where he is as opposed to uh, where I actually am, which is just kind of hovering around the edge of a table. You can't get onto the table for some reason. Follow Dad. Oh, yeah, now he, now he bothers to acknowledge where I am. All right, let's head out. Now, obviously, um, that means I've already set a few of my stats, but I can't actually show you them yet because I don't have a pit boy, so I can't show you my initial stats. But I will be able to show you them uh, very soon. Happy birthday, honey. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. It's a very strange thing to say on your birthday when you think about it. Well, you know, I'm proud of you for getting to the age of ten. It's not that difficult, just had to not die. Actually, I guess for my character that is kind of a big deal. As overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. 
I do love how when he's got it in his hands, it's already got a little Vault Boy symbol on it. Um, so it's actually showing the correct screen that would be the default screen when you turn it on. That's kind of cool. So yeah, it's got the same thing when it was holding in his hand that you've got now. So I'm just going to quickly show you uh, the stats of Onigan before we go any further. So let's go into the special you've already seen and the derivative skills that uh, that leads to. So uh, Barter at 15. Big guns at 23 because big guns are a function of endurance, not of strength. Now that's really actually quite important. Uh, because big guns are actually going to be quite a big part of this run uh, because a lot of the the best weapons live under the big gun skill so that's very important energy weapons was a function of perception that's not going to be important just yet but it might be in time medicine obviously is not useful for the fact i'll be able to do any healing because i cannot do any healing in this game whatsoever but it does have a couple of associated perks so i can't completely ignore it melee weapons i can't see myself using to be honest i'll never want to be close enough to an enemy to be using that so that's fine repair and science both at a decent level and then yep everything else at a pretty decent level unarmed interestingly is obviously pretty good because that's a function of uh, endurance rather than strength uh so yeah i mean it's kind of interesting because when you look at like the derivative stats strength only informs one as weapons don't have a strength requirement and as even if your melee weapons is really poor you could still have really good unarmed to me, strength just feels like a really kind of weak stat in Fallout 3. I'm glad they fixed it in Fallout New Vegas. Oh, and I've got man, 280 got HP more. at the moment. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? Yes, Marta. I guess I'll kind of tell you I did. Sure, it's a great party. You're welcome. Who's your favorite barbarian? That's right, Grognak. Issue 14. And with no missing pages. I found this in a box of my father's old things. I do actually really quite like how in the Vault 101, obviously, because they're in a closed vault environment, birthday presents just have to be recycled stuff that they found or didn't want or need anymore. That's kind of, that's all it can be. So, I don't know. I think it's a really cute touch. Anyway, Old Lady Palmer. Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Obviously a little bit more of an obvious way to tell that uh, you weren't born in the vault there. Honestly, I wish they kept it a little bit more subtle, to be honest. I just like the fact that you can tell that the room isn't uh, in the vault, or rather the medical lab that you can see in the vault in the next section isn't the same room you were born in. So if you weren't born in the medical lab, where would you have been born? Uh, yeah, I just think maybe that's a little bit uh, too obvious, but never mind, eh? Anyway, present please. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday girl. No sharing required today. Attention, everyone. It's time to cut the cake. I love Andy. Oh, Andy. He's wonderful and I love him. I love how the adults are just like, yep, that's broadly what I expected to happen, damn robot. And now, the first potential bit of violence in the game. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. Now, under normal circumstances, of course, you uh, would probably uh, fight Butch or do anything, because it, it doesn't really matter. However, the way that you only live once works is, even if the game somehow forces a heal on you, which I think it might do a couple of times, it normally does when you enter or leave a DLC, for example, even under those circumstances, I have to keep counting that damage done to me is persistent. And I'll do that with a true health counter if I have to, which means I will literally overlay onto the screen what my health is, or rather what my max health is according to the game, and then just deduct the number of points of damage I've taken across the entirety of the game in order to come up with a true um, health counter. Now, if that reaches zero, then I have to unfortunately uh, kill myself, and that is the end of the run. So in this case... I'm going to surrender to Butch immediately, because if he punches me, I have to live with those bruises for the rest of my life. So, you can have it. I don't even like sweet rolls. Yeah, right. Thanks, loser. Oh, and happy birthday. <laughs> now, having done that, can I immediately then kind of turn him in for stealing my sweet roll? Happy Officer Gomez. Birthday, nope, no, I can't. All right, I just surrendered my sweet roll, and I have nothing I can do. Here you go. Happy birthday. It's not much, but I hope you like it. A kid's baseball cap. Oh, yes. And, of course, you can also have all the pats. Every hat. I shall have all the hats. Now, Dad, what about you? Good time. And with that, my dad stands up, and we move towards the next little bit of the area. Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. 
He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. And here he comes. Are you ready for your surprise? Is it a gun? Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. You know, I always found the gun a little bit of an odd thing. I mean, um, what your dad makes perfectly clear is even when he leaves the vault, um, he intends for you to stay here safely in the vault for the rest of your natural life. Um, so why does he give you a gun? What, what, what's the point of the gun? I mean, if there's the odd rad ropes, there seems to be plenty of vault security, though I guess, um, on the night when you escape, they don't seem to have done particularly a good job of holding off the rad roaches. But it always struck me as a little bit odd that he would give you a gun when he wants you to have a peaceful, safe life down in the vault. I mean, who's he, is he thinking that you need to learn to shoot because one day you might need to defend yourself against the overseer? Is that the implication? I'm really not sure. I mean, if it is, you'd think he'd kind of, you know, mention in like the note that he leaves you when he leaves, by the way, keep up your combat skills because you never know when the overseer might become a bit of a problem. So, anyway, Rad Roach popping in in a second. Oh no, sorry, I've got to do the actual uh, targets first. That's fine. That was totally aimed correct. Fine, I think I should have hit that. My gun skill probably not desperately high at the moment. And the other one. And then the Rad Roach. I should mention, by the way, that I'm playing this game on hard mode. Which is normally what I play. Oh, come on. There we go. Which is, yes, pretty much how I always play this game. I just find it's like the right balance between difficulty, but the enemies not just being like unfair bullet sponges. Oh, yes, and this game is kind of, plenty of enemies, especially the super units, are kind of bullet sponge anyway. So I've got no problem with playing on hard rather than very hard. I think it's like a good Hi, difficulty oh. that's still extremely challenging, especially under this rule set. Anyway, forward we go to my 60th, well not my birthday, it's not my birthday, it's exam day, uh, best possible day. Obviously, uh, a lot of people in the UK recently got your A-level results, and I think uh, when this video goes out, it will be pretty close oh, to, um, yeah, it'll be pretty close to GCSE result day well, as well. So, uh, yeah, good luck, balanced. good luck, or to those people who are getting them, or if you've already got them, I oh, hope no. they were what you were looking oh, for over in the UK. And of course, on the way past, don't forget the first uh, little bobblehead of the game, bobblehead medicine. I'll be getting some of the bobbleheads, not all of them. Some of them are in too dangerous locations for me to uh, go to when I can't heal at all. So, yeah, a little bit dangerous, some of them, but I will get quite a few. Anyway, let's uh, head on. We can do the exam straight away. Well, actually, no, we can't do the exam straight away. First, we've got something else a little bit to take care of, which is a bit of bullying going on between a martyr and Butch. Stupid tunnel snakes. Immature assholes, if you ask me. Why won't they leave me alone? It's not my fault my father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Please? So as I have an unusually high uh, bit of speech and charisma, I might well be able to actually talk Butch out of this uh, myself. Let's see what we can do. What? You want another beating? And, ooh, 50% speech chance. Um, hmm. I can back out if I need to. Let's see, yeah, speech 50%. Let's see if we can do this. Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. There we are. Lovely. Uh, yeah, you can talk them out of it just by, without a speech check, if you speak to the other two rather than Butch. But anyway, let's speak to our master to get our thanks. And she goes and does the exam too. Now, and for me myself... Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Yeah, but I'll be skipping it anyway, thank you. I don't have to take this stupid test, do I? Listen. I like your dad. I might even like you if I wasn't your teacher. That's a slightly creepy thing to say if you're playing as a female character. Male teachers shouldn't be saying that to 16-year-old students. We had that conversation a little bit loudly given everyone else was so close by. So yes, of course, the thing to bear in mind, Fallout 3 and New Vegas different. Uh, the big gun skills still existed back in Fallout 3. So, um, things that I need. I need to get my aggressive abilities up as fast as possible. Small guns is a given. So is big guns. Um, basically, if I want to get my damage and my DPS to be at a decent level early in the game, I need my big gun skills to be pretty decent. So, yeah, I'm going to have to have my setup like that. The other one that's important is lockpick. I would say it's pretty important to be able to have lockpick pretty high. Um, I'm just trying to think what the earliest time... Actually, yeah, there's a couple of... It's not so much that I need lockpick to be uh, to be able to do easy locks right away. 
it's more the case that um, I have to get to a hundred lockpick, or rather, uh, just like 90, 96 or ninety four. If I use men, yeah, just basically, I need to get my uh, my lockpick to the stage where, with enough mentats and a nice hat, I can get past very hard locks as soon as possible. Because the moment you can get past some very hard locks, there's a couple of very good weapons that you can get fairly early on in the game that will help you out an awful lot. Is there anything else that I would potentially need more than uh, more than any of these? No, I don't think so. I think that's all absolutely fine. Um, yeah, pretty aggressive. It's a pretty aggressive build with big guns, but I'd say that is very, very important for the sort of game style that I'm planning. Come on, people, find your And now we can just exit the classroom and move straight on. Come on, you've got to wake up. And what's wrong, Amata? You've got to get out of here. Your dad is gone and my father's men are looking for you. They don't have to look very far. I'm literally asleep in my room. Where else did they think I was going to be? There's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. I like Amata. Oh, one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you'd better take it just in case. I am going to take the pistol. Um, you can leave her with it and it saves you from having to kill one person later. But I'd say it's better to have it because otherwise you have to take on a few guards without a projectile weapon. Which is a bit of a problem. So yeah, I am going to take that. Okay, now time to ransack the room quickly. Medex, 10 stim packs. Medex is useful, the stim packs not so. So obviously, um, just so I'm clear on what I mean by no healing. I cannot use stim packs. I cannot eat food. I cannot uh, do anything with a doctor. I can't heal any of my limbs. Or anything of that nature. All of that is banned. Uh, I cannot take any perk that gives me regeneration. I cannot use rad away. My rads must be persistent just as my uh, just as everything else is. So is any of this useful? Eh, that might be worth carrying out. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I can't use uh, rad away. I can use radex, medex and all other forms of drugs. However, we agreed that if I got addicted... I would not be able to cure that addiction. I just have to live with that addiction. The only drug I'm not allowed to use is buff out because otherwise I could use buff out to effectively give myself to like if I'm down to like one HP, I can constantly use buff out whenever I'm under fire to get up to 61 HP. And even if I take like 40 damage, um, when the buff out wears off, I just be back to one again because you can't die through buff out um, wearing off. So we decided when I was doing the New Vegas run that buff out was banned, but all other drugs are allowed. Now, just to quickly uh, get myself set up. So at the start of the game, not very much good stuff here. A pistol with a damage of six, BB gun with damage of two, and a baseball bat with a damage of four. Because my melee weapons are so damn poor. So uh, the perfect condition pistol that Amata gives you, lovely that it's a uh, perfect condition. It's the best weapon that you're going to have for now. Um, this game doesn't let you see DPS, but I have a pretty good idea for what like the DPS of the various weapons are. This one's not bad. Uh, but it's not perfect either. Now, if I can just... There she is. It right there. Yeah, 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 I'm sure, but you're going to die, actually, and the rad roach is going to finish you off. Yep, hang on. Let's see if I can... Can I get the kill on him just for the experience? Uh, Officer Kendall, apparently 0% chance it's his torso. That's interesting. Let's go for his right leg. And, oh, I think he got killed by the rad roaches anyway. That's fine. Do I get the experience for that? I'm not sure. And, oi, rad roach... The rad roach has just wandered off in that direction. That's going to be unfortunate. <laughs> it's the direction the butch is in at the minute. Uh, so I hope they don't wander too far in that direction. Otherwise, he's going to run into them. Rad roaches. Rad roaches. There we are. You. And you. So, here's one of the reasons why this game is much more difficult than Fallout New Vegas. Um, Iron Sight aiming isn't a thing in this game. Uh, you've just got to deal with this view, which is fine because you can still use the trick of using vats to line up your shot and just take the shot manually, which often gives you a better result than you would have had had you just used uh, vats. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty that's kind of a pretty good trick for how you can do a lot of aiming in this game, but it's still not perfect. Now, to remind myself, is there any good loot anywhere uh, in the bathrooms? I can't remember if there's a medical kit in these bathrooms or if that's not a thing. I don't think it's a thing. You gotta help me! My mom's trapped in there with the rad roaches! And, okay, let's see if we can help her. But first, I'm going to talk to you for a bit. Yes, if only you knew what irony meant, butch. Look, I'm sorry for the way I've always treated you. 
You know I never meant any of it, right? He did no offense make it clear in the previous part that he has beaten me up in the past. So yes, it was it was a beating he didn't mean. He didn't really it was, it was a friendly punching. Alright, I'll help. Um, I could obviously, if you go down the, are you afraid of a few rad roaches, I think you can choose to give him your BB gun and he'll go and do it by himself, but I'd rather go and do it myself, why not? Hello, yeah, we'll go and do it. Uh, I guess, that, ooh, the only problem is I'm running a little bit low on ammo, actually. Actually, I don't even need, because they'll be attacking her, I don't really need to use my pistol. Yeah, I've got my BB gun. I've got good experience using my BB gun against rad roaches. Now, uh, yeah, these things will go down pretty quickly. It's fine. Uh, I don't think they ever turn on you. They're they're 100% interested in her. Uh, actually, how how much health does she have? I don't think that much. Actually, I think she's she's quite she's got quite a bit of health actually. Oh, oh yeah, she's dying faster than I thought. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got a better idea. The baseball bat deals with these things quite easily because um, baseball because melee weapons get bonuses in that. So you can see that take the uh, this does quite a lot to her. So baseball bat. And can I hit that? Uh, let's hit that one as it's closer. Baseball bat. So, dead baseball bat. And wait, what did I just hit? And one more. Are they all dead? Yeah, they're all fine. I haven't taken a hit there. Uh, yeah, I'd forgotten that ammo's quite low when you're in the vault. I've got to be a little bit careful. But I want you to have my tunnel snake's jacket. Go ahead, take it. Oh, why not? Excellent. Now, the more important thing to take is there's loads of vodka in her room, so it's worth taking all of the vodka. It's actually kind of odd how much vodka there is in this room, given it's kind of made clear she's suffering from alcoholism. They can't be producing their own vodka, so where's she getting all this vodka from? You'd think it would have, like, run out long ago because there's a finite supply. Well, actually, I guess um, we know that as the vault is actually sporadically opened, maybe more's brought in. But you'd think if they were going through the super clandestine opening of the vault, they just would, you know, not bother. Uh, you'd think they'd kind of maybe do something, uh, they'd bring in an important thing, like purified water or bits to fix the generator. But apparently, no, they're fine to just bring in vodka. Vodka's the important thing. Now, uh, what have we got in here? Oh, yeah, we've got you guys. Um... Okay, it's safe to kill them as long as I'm doing it in vats. Dead. And I don't know, if, I don't know if it was just me. I always felt like in Fallout 3, there was a little bit more, um... The vat system felt a bit more visceral, especially the attacks with melee weapons. I always felt like it just felt a little bit more vicious than it did in, uh, in Fallout New Vegas. To me, especially with melee weapons, it just felt like it wasn't hitting quite as... Harder as well. So I've just checked my HP. Currently sitting at 280 and still doing just fine. So that is lovely. I've not taken a hit yet. You can take hits in VATS. Um, in Fallout 3, going into VATS is actually a good defensive mechanism. And the reason why that's the case is because um, in Fallout 3, while in VATS, you got... It wasn't 100% resistance to damage, but you gain like something ridiculous. It's like 75% of all damage is just cancelled. Um, immediately by virtue of uh, going uh, going into VATS. That was toned down a lot in New Vegas and it was only like a 30% uh, damage resistance increase in uh, over in Fallout New Vegas. But yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite a lot in... It's quite a lot in uh, Fallout 3. So it's a good defensive mechanism if you're kind of in trouble. Just going into VATS if you're under fire and returning fire in VATS will mean you take a lot less damage when you're done with the firefight. Actually, that's a good point. Uh, that first uh, guy I killed, I should probably go and quickly uh, loot his corpse. Because uh, I need to remember. Armour in this game is actually less important than it was in Fallout New Vegas. In Fallout New Vegas, you got... Because the damage threshold system was a thing. As a result of that, um, for the most part, you ended up in a situation fairly early on where you could effectively tank and reduce damage by 85% very early on in the game, because as long as your damage threshold was higher than the damage that was incoming, then basically that meant that you've negated damage, but New Vegas didn't let you negate damage, it said that you can negate up to 85% of total damage. Now Fallout 3 says the same thing, you can negate 85% um, of damage, but it uses the damage resistance system, which is a lot less generous, which is, if you have 40 damage threshold, you can effectively tank anything that um, does anything up to 40 damage. So you're, at that point, you're only taking 15% damage from any shot up to 40, which is quite a powerful blow to be shot with. 
Whereas in Fallout 3, if you've got 40 damage resistance, you're only reducing every shot by 40%. So by 40 rather than 85%. So that's a pretty major downgrade. Uh, so yeah, bit of a problem. Bit of a small problem there, which means you're a lot more vulnerable. So armor's not good, especially in the early game. So let's say for the sake of argument that all my enemies are going to have uh, 10mm pistols, which is going to be damage 6. At the moment, I've got my Volt Suit on, which effectively gives me 1% damage resistance, and my damage resistance total is 1. If I put on the armor and the helmet, then that gets my damage resistance up to 12, or 12% 12 reduction. So that gets the damage 6 that the enemies might be firing at me down to about 5.5, which the game will round up to 6. So in other words, it makes literally no difference. Um... You know, if I was shot with, say, something that was doing um, 100 damage, it would make a very healthy difference. But as I'm going up against such kind of uh, low, low damage weaponry, at this point, there's almost no point wearing armor. And that's something that's actually worth taking uh, into account, because sometimes it can be worse, it can be worth wearing worse armor in Fallout 3, because it gives you bonuses of some description. Um, so, for example, if you were using melee weapons, if you're a melee weapon user... Um, it'll probably be worth just going over to your baseball bat and wearing the Tunnel Snakes outfit. That's probably going to be the most powerful build that you've got at this point in the game, which is why Tunnel Snakes is quite good, even though damage resistance is so much lower, because damage resistance in this game doesn't actually matter that much. Anyway, uh, with the armor on, because I may as well have it on, I'm going to quickly loot in here. So as we get the H, we reach the first bit of uh, fire that you're under in the game, which is these two lovely people here. Decide they're going to make a run for the exit, and are shot for their trouble. What does this girl do, by the way? Does she also run and get immediately shot? Yep, that sounds like that was being shot there. So these are the first people in the game who have got uh, guns. Um, I don't want to bother fighting them because they are, you know, they're tough and they've got guns. Um, so I'm just going to skirt around them. But first I'm just going to loot this little side room so there's some good stuff in there. I'm perfectly hidden at the minute. I've not exactly got spectacular... Um, I've not exactly got spectacular... Uh, stealth, but good enough that if they don't see me, they won't detect me. I should, of course, point out um, for people who uh, haven't noticed yet. Um, yeah, weight uh, 160 is what I can carry. I can only carry 160 pounds of stuff, which is not very much at all. That is a bit of a problem. Now, what I'm going to do now, because of those two guys in there, is I'm going to sneak round to the bottom of the hall here, and I'm going to try and just loop round slowly, and I'm pretty sure they shouldn't see me. So if I just gently go around here, yep, we're fine. These guys are dangerous because, like, you saw them, them shoot the person a second ago. They've actually got guns. I think they're are they the only two guards in the whole place that have guns. They might well be. Anyway, we should now be well safe for them, so we can just nip around the corner. And I'm going to change to uh, BB gun to take out the rad roaches. The rad roaches are rather mysterious, which is um, sometimes they're just not hostile to you. Um, it's, yeah, kind of weird. These ones are already hostile, which is, uh, well, sad, but yeah, you are. You see, I'm detected, but he's not that fussed with me. There we are. He's dead and detected, but not attacking me. They're very, and now he'll attack me, sure, but, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let them get too close, mind. They'll, uh, you know, every, every hit counts, obviously. That's, uh, that's what this rule set is all about. All right, now I think there's one to the right. I thought there was one to the right, but maybe there's not. Hang on, round here then. No, okay. I thought there would have been one there. I'm just going to close this door just to make sure I'm safe from those two bastards down there. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, you've spotted me. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Keep your distance. Keep your distance. Keep your distance, please. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. He's just taking a random swing. There we go, you bastard. Okay, that was a little bit too close for flipping Vault 101. I'll have his stuff off him, though, obviously. Now, let's see what else we've got going on here. Uh, detected. Is that by you? Yes, that'll be by you. Ah, oh, hello, Rad Roaches. Rad Roaches need to... Why did he come and fight me when they're still flipping Rad Roaches? You'd think he'd... Go for them first. Okay, now where's the rest of them? Given apparently he couldn't be bothered to deal with the rad roaches. He was just like happy to leave them in here. In fact, they, they have killed someone canonically. Oh, hello, are you... No, what? Where are all the rad roaches? <laughs> I don't like it when I can't see them. That worries me. Oh, did he kill one of them? He killed one of them, perhaps. Uh, where the heck are the rest of them? 
I've seen this happen before in this Oh, there it is. There's, well, there's one at least. Oh, hang on. Hang on. There we go. Lovely. Yeah, it does look like on this occasion he has killed a few of them. Which I've seen before. Um, the security chief can... Can wander. Uh, he can wander around a little bit anyway. Um, he's... Ooh, hello. Oh, so that's just... That's just you, is it? I don't like this guy. He's a jerk. I'm just gonna... Yeah, that's right. Screw you. Screw you. And screw you. Now, a couple of important things to grab here. We've got Floyd Lewis's body here, which is always nice. Utility jumpsuit, very useful. I think, actually, I already got one of those from my room, but it's still worth grabbing because it's uh, yeah, a valuable little thing. Um, the looting changes a lot between Fallout 3 and New Vegas. So, in New Vegas, you'll very often be prioritizing just trying to get... Um, you just try and get hold of as many guns as possible. Because, like, a 10mm pistol in Fallout New Vegas is really, really valuable. In fact, all guns in decent condition are really, really valuable. Not really, um, th not really so much of a thing in Fallout 3. In Fallout 3, guns tend to be quite low value for whatever reason. And instead, what you kind of ended up with was a situation where um, items like Wonder Glue um, were much worth collecting because they weigh one but have a value of 10. And generally what you should be doing is you should be looking at um, value ratios in terms of weight to value. That's kind of what I'm pretty much always going to be looking at. And it sounds like a martyr is in trouble. If we'd let her keep this gun, then she'd actually be able to take care of this by herself. But um, as we haven't, she can't. So we've got to kind of do it for her. So we've just got to open the door. And that's, that's the overseer. Don't murder him. Don't murder him. Ah, now you, however, Officer Mac... Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, that's a beautiful execution. That's just lovely. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Lewis head right. Is his head, is his head somewhere over there? Is it somewhere over there? I think we might have actually exploded it. We've exploded his head. That is not bad for a, for a newbie to this whole, you know, escaping the vault thing. I will gladly have his stuff too. Now, hang on. Yes, yes, I'll get to you in a second. I just want to loot first. What's really interesting, actually, I think, about this area is um, there's lots of pre-war money dotted around it. Like in some of the um, the desks, you'll find kind of pre-war money in this and kind of in other desks further along. I've always thought it's quite interesting that, like, the overseer seems to be hoarding the pre-war money. And I'm not sure that's supposed to imply, like, in the vault during peacetime. Do they actually use pre-war money as currency? Because if so, I think that's actually kind of interesting. Anyway, we'll just help ourselves to some more stuff out of this. Though admittedly, aside from the police baton, which has a good weight to value ratio, the arm is really not favourable. It's like only, um, you know, one weight to two value. So like, you should really not take much of that. If you can take anything else, take anything else ahead of taking out armour. The helmets are way better. It's also interesting that in a second, what he'll actually say to me is um, he'll say I ought to surrender. But even if I step inside this cell and kind of hide right over here in the corner, um, even though the, one of the terminal options is you can lock the cell, he doesn't go and do it. He just kind of stands there waving me over. But uh, all right, fine. I'm, I'm cool with that. Let's go and see what you have to say. I hope you're here to turn yourself in, young lady. You're already in enough trouble as it is. I just ran into this office and literally blew someone's head off. These are not the actions of a person in a surrendering mood. Anyway, let's just take care of a martyr's safety. But I admire your protective instincts. Very well. I give you my word that a martyr will not suffer further because of your actions. Interestingly, I don't actually know what happens if you do actually say to him, or I will do it your way, I surrender and give him the weapons. I would assume he just shoots you with the gun that you hand over to him. But I don't actually know, and today is not the day to find out. My father's no traitor, and you're a murderer and a thug. Boo, overseer. You won't survive the night. Guards, help me! I love how he just yells out for guards that aren't really there. There's only this guard. This guard, there's this guard here, and he didn't do very well. There we are. We'll just leave your one security guard nicely tucked inside you. Beautiful. Now, just got to do a little bit more looting before we go any further. There's just a few little bits and pieces. Uh, Jonas's corpse has the uh, the lab uniform on it, which is quite good. And there's, I think there's a bit more money in the, uh, in the desks. Now, before we go any further, we want to ransack the rooms of the Overseer and Amata for bobby pins. Bobby pins are awesome. And I think he's got a bit more ammo in his area too, which is always very useful in his desk. Yes, there we are. Uh, 12 rounds of ammo. I'm not going to take the key. It's a very easy lock. I may as well just crack it open for the experience. And hello, Amata. I'll try to meet you at the vault door. If I don't make it, good luck. Thanks, Amata. Now, let's just crack in here nice and quick. Yes, I know how flipping locks work, game. 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's strange how obviously, you know, I feel like maybe that one ought to turn itself off after you're uh, done for the first time. This cabinet, very, very important indeed. 120 rounds plus Mentat. The password and some stim packs are very good. And obviously you can, I'm using the scouting report, you can gather kind of more information that makes it kind of very clear that what was actually going on the whole time was um, that uh, the overseer was sending people in and out of the vaults. But uh, I don't need to worry about that really. I instead, uh, instead I will just crack open the overseer's tunnel, which I'll admit is very cool. It's one of the, to my mind, one of like the coolest little things uh, in in any vault in any of the modern Fallout games. Quite frankly, the fact that there's this little secret tunnel under the overseer's thing, and then we will just shut ourselves in because I think those two guys with the guns, if you don't kill them, they they do roam on occasion. I've seen them kind of go for there. I'm not sure if they're like summoned by the overseer's cries. I'm really not sure how it works. Hello. Boom. And with the final rad roach dead. Yep, definitely dead. I think we are fit to move on into the final little area. I've always kind of wondered what this what this kind of secret tunnel is for, but I guess if you were conducting secret experiments to get people in and out of the vault, then the way that you would do it would be you'd need kind of a secret way to sneak people into the overseer's office. So like when people were going on expedition, they'd re report to the overseer's office, go through the secret tunnel and then leave. But I don't know, to me it feels like the door opening mechanism is so big and loud that it would probably create a rumble that you'd hear throughout the vault. But uh, I don't know, that's just my take on it anyway. Now what's going to happen here is right now I cannot get through this door, it requires a key. I'm going to open the door, Amata's going to come in and chat to me and then immediately afterwards that door's going to open and two guys are going to run through. I need to make sure, basically, that when that happens, I am ready to leave the vault. Because they won't leave the vault when they don't have guns. These are the unarmed ones. So I'm going to activate the door panel. And I'm going to go down here. And actually be right down here. Ready to start running the moment Amata's finished speaking to me. And just try and avoid getting my head taken off by this too. Amata runs up. Yep, lovely. She's willing to watch. I just love it. I love the big chunky opening of the vault. It's great. Now, just need to go a little bit back this way. And actually, do I just... I could just skip speaking to him. Oh, no, no. Yep, yep. You did it! You opened the door! My God, I almost didn't believe it was possible. And I couldn't have done it without your help. Well, I couldn't have done it without your gun, but let, let's be polite. No, you didn't need me. If anyone can survive out there, it's you. And why don't you come with me, Amart? We'll go on adventures together! It's tempting, but my place is here. The vault needs me more than you do. I'm the only one who has a chance to talk some sense into my father. Listen, if you do catch up with your dad, tell him I'm sorry for... For, you know, Jonas and, and my father and everything. Goodbye. And now I run out. Those two guys are going to run down. But I'm pretty sure they won't leave the vault. Uh, Officer Richards, Officer O'Brien. Wait, that's more officers than I was expecting. Do any of them... No, are they just going to refuse to leave the... Wait, what are they... He's got a gun! I'm getting, I'm getting the hell out of here! <laughs> I'd forgotten that there were people with guns. i never seen that before. I've only ever seen two guys. I'm just going to leave, you know. Let's just leave the vault before anyone starts firing a gun at me. And out we come into the wasteland. Oh, I love it. You've got to love it when the first time that happens, the blinding flash of light. Oh, it's beautiful. And here we are. Capital Wasteland, 200 XP for completing that. And we get our first level up to. Now, my priorities for the minute. My priorities for the minute are pretty much 100% offensive. So I basically want to get small guns up to 50 as early as possible. That's kind of important. Ooh, but, um, 50? Yeah, why not? Let's get it up to 50 and then put another point into... Actually, no, let's get it up to 48. 48 and then science up to... Actually, science doesn't need to be because I've got the, I've got the, um, the lab uniform. Let's just get small guns up as, as just as high as possible. Small guns up as high as possible. We want that to be going up pretty darn quickly. 50, but I don't... I, I like round numbers. I really like round numbers. Let's get 17 up to 18. 18 is a more pleasant number. Yes, continue. On our first perk of the game. Fallout 3 was interesting because, of course, so many of its perks were basically just get five points to sneak and to lockpick or get five points to um, 
to science and to medicine. Personally, I find like perks that just give you, you know, bonuses to points were very, very boring, and I'm kind of glad that they weren't really a thing in New Vegas. And it sounds like they're not going to be such a thing in Fallout 4, so that's very exciting. Anyway, uh, Black Widow, uh, that was always what I intended to do. Plus 10% damage versus male opponents. I mean, that's just very, very valuable. So I'm going to take that, and we are in good shape. Now, another thing that's very important to note um, in Fallout 3 versus Fallout New Vegas, my HP has gone up from 280 to 290. So this was the difference between Fallout uh, New Vegas and Fallout 3. Oh, all, all the DLCs loading in. While the DLCs bothering to uh, load in, uh, yeah, in Fallout New Vegas, you gained 5 HP per level. In Fallout 3, that's 10 HP per level. The reason for that is the level cap is lower. 20 in the base game, 30 with DLC versus 30 in the base game for New Vegas and New Vegas 50 with all the DLC. You also leveled up more slowly in Fallout 3 because there were less quests. So you got less big dumps of experience. So, uh, yeah, I just feel like that was, uh, that was kind of what uh, was the cause of that. That means um, I'll be leveling up more slowly, but when I do level up, um, I will gain more out of it. So, yes, there we are. Is that all of it? Is that all? I think that's all of the DLC that's now just loading in. Are we all done? Yes, lovely. And we have so many problems. We have so many problems to face in, uh, in Fallout 3 versus uh, Fallout New Vegas. It's kind of mad how much tougher Fallout 3 is going to be. And I will probably go into that next week. I'll start going into why when Ron Perlman says the wasteland was a cruel and inhospitable place, he is not bloody joking. This this game is... Next to New Vegas, this is very, very hard. New Vegas, I was able to complete under this rule set. This, I do not think it is possible. I think it is genuinely impossible. The way that damage is calculated, everything about this game is just too damn tough to make it happen. And, oh, there's an Enclave iBot. No trouble with you. Don't want any trouble with you. Let's just uh, pop that away there. But, yes. I think we will pick this up next week, ladies and gentlemen. But it has begun. Here we are with On Again. And we are going to be taking on all of Fallout 3 on a single health par. And, oh my goodness, it's going to be impossible. Next week, I'm going to start kidding myself out. And hopefully getting myself into a situation where I might at least stand half a chance. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. It's been many a true nerd. And welcome to Fallout 3. You only live once. Thank you very much and goodbye.